Welcome to the Bookle Channel. I will be reading Secret 3 of the book, The Absolute Secrets of Complete Self-Confidence by Dr. Robert Anthony. Don't forget to support us to keep downloading more audiobooks by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel to receive all the new stuff. Let's. Secret number 3. The Art of Self-Acceptance. Recognition of your own true worth is another crucial factor in building total self-confidence. It is a demonstrated fact of life that you can never be better than your own self-esteem, that is, how you feel about yourself in relation to others, based on your sense of self-acceptance. These feelings are basically unconscious and have been programmed into your subconscious since early childhood. Positive self-esteem is not the intellectual acceptance of one's talents or accomplishments. It is personal self-acceptance. Developing positive self-esteem is not an ego trip. You are not in love with yourself in an egotistical sense. You simply realize that you are a truly unique and worthy individual, one who does not need to impress others with your achievements or material possessions. In fact, the person who constantly brags and boasts has one of the classic symptoms of poor self-esteem. On the surface, many people appear to have positive or high self-esteem. But this is not always the case. One of the tragedies of our time concerns those leaders, teachers, inventors, artists, and people who have made great contributions to humankind, and yet are victims of their own low self-esteem. Some of the most admired people in history have become drug addicts, alcoholics, and even committed suicide just to escape from a self that they could never quite accept and often grew to hate. Developing positive self-esteem is not just a matter of making yourself happy, it is the foundation on which you must build your whole life. If you ever hope to be free to create the life you desire, it is a task that you must take seriously. If you don't, you can only expect your low self-esteem to get even worse as you grow older until you end up like a tragic number of people who are unhappy, or worse yet, suicidal. One of the best way to build high self-esteem is to know how low self-esteem is developed and how it manifests itself in others. You will then be able to see what you can do to raise your level of self-esteem. In the beginning, there are three major causes of low self-esteem. The first is a series of self-defeating concepts, beliefs, and values that you have accepted from your parents. The second is a unique set of put-downs, received throughout your school years, from false and distorted concepts of teachers and such things of vocational placement analyzes and IQ tests. The third stems from negative religious conditioning with its over. Emphasis on feelings of guilt and unworthiness. While there are many other contributing factors to low self-esteem, these three are the most important. This chapter deals with the first of these. By far the strongest single contributing factor to our low self-esteem is the low self-esteem of our parents. This is true especially of our mothers, the person with whom we usually spend our most impressionable years. Since most adults labor under false concepts, values, and beliefs, these are passed on to children through attitudes actions and reactions like a contagious disease. If our parents feel inadequate and inferior we, as children, will feel unworthy and, as a result, unable to cope with even the simplest problems in home or school. In essence, the false assumptions of our parents become the facts of our existence. The following will help you see why this happens. From the time you were born to about five years old, your brain was developing rapidly. This period of rapid growth is referred to by psychologists as the imprint period. During this time, your brain received crucial and permanent impressions, which helped formulate your behavior patterns. You can readily see that if one or both parents were suffering from low self-esteem during this time, how easily this might be absorbed by a child's impressionable mind. Low self-esteem started when you made your first mistake and were told you were a bad girl or a bad boy. You misinterpreted this and felt that you were bad when, in reality, only your actions were bad. The truth of the matter is that there is no such thing as a bad child. The only thing bad about any child is the lack of awareness as to what produces positive results. Obviously, there are certain things that a child should not do, things for which reasonable disciplinary action is necessary. But these, in themselves, never make the child bad by telling you that you are a bad girl or bad boy. You identified with your actions rather than recognizing that your actions are but the means you choose to fulfill your dominant needs. If a child is not made to understand this and believe 
that he is basically bad. He will develop feelings of unworthiness and inferiority, which will be programmed into his subconscious mind. These feelings will subsequently manifest themselves as shame, self-condemnation, remorse and, worst of all, guilt. A low or negative self-esteem is further developed through the common habit of belittling by comparison. When parents compare a child with a brother, sister or, particularly, someone outside the family, the child's sense of inferiority is compounded. In the light of the flaws he has come to accept as part of his own makeup, he compares himself to children of the same age whom he admires, believing that they are endowed with more strength, ability, popularity, and self-confidence than he has, a devastating sense of inferiority overpowers him. If parents were to temper their criticism with encouraging phrases like, you're far too nice a boy girl to let something like this happen, this kind of negative programming could be largely prevented. Lack of recognition or appreciation of the child's uniqueness is another. Parental failing. Most parents pay little regard to their children's feelings, desires and opinions, rebuffing them with such maxims as, children should be seen and not heard. And mother, father knows best. Often, they take disagreement as either a personal affront or an out of and out disrespect. Leading child psychologists agree that this attitude is due to the parent's low self-esteem that manifests itself as the need to always be right. T is a disturbing fact that a large number of parents lead their lives vicariously through their children. Having decided that their child should be everything they secretly yearn to be and are not, they push the child beyond his or her capability. They want their own unrealized dreams of accomplishment to become reality through their children. Of course, this is done at the child's expense. What such parents fail to recognize is that the child is unable to meet their unreasonably high standards simply because he or she has not developed to or may not even have the emotional, mental, or physical capacity to do so. Physical appearance, much more than is realized, is also a major cause of low self-esteem. A number of children suffer from physical mental and emotional handicaps because of unusual or abnormal physical appearance. By constantly bringing this to their attention and telling them that they are too fat, too tall, too slow, etc., they develop deep feelings of inferiority that are difficult to overcome. Some parents place high value on money and possessions. The child identifies with this and is imprisoned by a materialistic lifestyle, which demands that he struggle and strive for material success. Later in life the child often marries for money and pays a very high price for what they get. If a high value is placed on money and material possessions it is not unusual for the child to grow up spending money he doesn't have on things he doesn't need to impress people he doesn't know. As materialism destroys the child's perception of his own true worth, he is committed to a life of chasing wealth to compensate for feelings of inferiority. The previous chapter explains how most parents completely miss the mark when it comes to developing self-reliance in their offspring. Overpowering, over-permissive or over-possessive parents are usually the ones who turn their child into an emotional cripple, deprived of the necessary motivation to face life situations with self-confidence and poise, the child procrastinates and takes the path of least resistance. Lack of self-reliance fosters feelings of inadequacy, which in turn also forms the basis of low self-esteem, contrary to common belief. Raising a child through a system based primarily on reward and punishment is guaranteed to perpetuate low self-esteem. The child must be permitted, without fear of punishment, to make as many mistakes as necessary to learn his lessons. Once he has learned them, most likely, he will never have to repeat them. He will know that, whatever he does, he either earns his own rewards or suffers the consequences of his mistakes. The earlier he realizes this, the better. The most damaging aspect of low self-esteem is that we pass it from one generation to another. Research has tragically demonstrated that suicides follow along family lines. After what you have just read, this should not surprise you. It is easy to see that, if low self-esteem is inherited, in some cases the resulting manifestation will be extreme. Besides contaminating our children with our low self-esteem, we tend to contaminate everyone with whom we come in contact. If we are in a position to influence others, such as teachers or clergy, we spread the disease to those who look to us for leadership and inspiration. They intuitively sense our lack of self-worth and poor self-esteem and 
inevitably begin to take on portions of what they identify and associate with us. I have counseled hundreds of individuals who have lacked the necessary self-confidence to meet life situations successfully. Each one of them was the product of the low self-esteem that was passed on to them from home, school, and or negative religious conditioning. Low self-esteem has many manifestations or addictions. These can be described as the means and habits we develop to escape the demands of everyday living. They are simply alibis that permit us to temporarily avoid facing up to personal reality. The severity of the addiction we choose is in direct proportion to our sense of inadequacy and fear of having to justify who and what we are. The addicted person uses his alibi to cover up the low self-esteem he doesn't want others to see. The major addictions of a person with low self-esteem. Blaming and complaining. We blame others and complain to and about them because we refuse to accept the fact that we are responsible for everything that happens to us. It is much easier to blame someone else than to say, it is I who has the problem, or it is I who must change. The person who habitually complains and blames others feels inadequate and tries to build himself up by putting other people down. Fault finding. We find fault with others because they do not accept or comply with our own set of values. We compensate for our feelings of inadequacy by trying to make ourselves right and make them wrong. Notice that we frequently do not like it when they do the things we most dislike about ourselves. When we find fault with their actions, in effect we are saying, I don't like myself for doing that, so I can't let you get away with it. It is psychologically true that we tend to dislike most in other people those faults or weaknesses that we have within ourselves. Need for attention and approval many people have a compulsive need for attention and approval. They are unable to recognize and appreciate themselves as worthy, adequate individuals of importance. They have a compulsive need for continuous confirmation that they are okay and that others accept and approve of them. Lack of close friends. Persons with low self-esteem usually do not have close friends because they do not like themselves. They generally choose to be either loners, living their lives apart from others, or manifest the opposite behavior pattern and become aggressive, overpowering, critical, and demanding. Neither type of personality is conducive to friendship. Aggressive need to win. If we have an obsession to win or be right all the time, we are suffering from a desperate need to prove ourselves to those around us. We try to do this through our achievements. Our motivation is always to receive acceptance and approval. The whole idea is to be, in some way, better than the next person. Overindulgence. People who cannot live with themselves because they do not like the way they are, usually try to satisfy their needs through a form of substitution. Feeling deprived and hurt they seek mental and physical. Opiates to dull the ache. They medicate themselves with food, drugs, alcohol, or tobacco to get temporary sensual satisfaction. This allows them to temporarily cover up their emotional pain and poor self-esteem. Overindulgence compensates for feelings of self-rejection. It gives them a temporary reprieve from facing reality and the growing need to change their habits. Depression. We get depressed because we think something outside of ourselves is keeping us from having what we want. We become totally discouraged with ourselves because we feel out of control, inadequate, and unworthy. The frustration and anxiety in trying to live up to our own expectations and those of others cause us to have low self-esteem. Greed and selfishness. Persons who are greedy and selfish have an overwhelming sense of inadequacy. They are absorbed in their own needs and desires that they must fulfill at any cost to compensate for their lack of self-worth. They seldom have the time or interest to be concerned with others, even with the people who love them. Indecision and procrastination. Low self-esteem is frequently accompanied by an abnormal fear of making mistakes. Afraid that he may not do what he should or what others expect him to do, he usually does nothing at all or, at least, delays doing anything for as long as possible. He is reluctant to make a decision because he feels that he is incapable of making the right one. So, if he does nothing, he cannot make a mistake. Another type of person who falls into this category is the perfectionist. He has a similar personality pattern, only he always needs to be right, basically insecure. He is intent on being above criticism. In this way, 
he can feel better than those who, according to his criteria, are less perfect, putting up a false front. Those who put up a false front feel less than others around them. To counteract this, they often name drop, boast or exhibit such nervous mannerisms as a loud voice or forced laughter, or use material possessions to impress others. They will not let anyone discover how they truly feel about themselves and, in an effort to hide their inferiority, put up false fronts to keep others as so they think of from seeing them as they really are. Self-pity. A feeling of self-pity or the poor me syndrome results from our inability to take charge of our lives. We have allowed ourselves to be placed at the mercy of people, circumstances and conditions and are always being pushed one way and then the other. We permit people to upset, hurt, criticize and make us angry because we have a leaning, dependent personality and like attention and sympathy. We often use illness as a means of controlling others because we have learned that there is great power in playing weakness routine. When we are sick or ill, others will feel sorry for us and give us what we desire. Suicide. This is the severest form of self-criticism. People who commit suicide are not trying to escape from the world. They are escaping from themselves, the self they have rejected and learned to despise. Instead of facing up to the condition, which is at the root of their problem, they feel hurt and resentful and seek to put an end to it all. Their problem, of course, is low self-esteem, the most common emotional, physical and psychological characteristics of low self-esteem, emotional, aggressive, timid, false laughter, boasting, impatient, tries to be better than others. Competitive, arrogant, people-pleaser, name-dropper, critical, rebels against authority, perfectionist, domineering, dominates, conversation, procrastinator, cannot admit mistakes, compulsive, drinker. Smoker, talker, hobbyist, physical, sloppy appearance, wilted handshake, lackluster eyes, grossly overweight, turned down mouth, tense and nervous, sagging posture, weak voice, can't look others in the eye, psychological, anxious, vacillating dislikes, hates, rejects himself, need to be liked and accepted by everyone and sure thinks he is a loser, ridden with shame, guilt, blame, remorse, needs approval. Must be right all the time absorbed problems needs to win compulsive need for money, prestige, and power. Does what others want him to do. Lives vicariously through his children, TV or hero worship. Now let's turn the illuminating glare of truth spotlight on another area of